Hey everybody and welcome to today's video in which we are going to talk about creating a Chesterfield. Now before we go any further let me explain what a Chesterfield is. Chesterfield is basically furniture that looks something like this. Some of you, probably all of you have seen furniture like this. Maybe some of you even own it. And as you can see, it's basically just leather that has uh, holes in it. And it comes into wide varieties. You have sofas, you have uh, smaller benches, you have uh, something like this. Then you have even more sofas, chairs. So all around, you have different types of uh, Chesterfields. You even have Chesterfields uh, lining for a door, which makes a great way to insulate for sound. So today in this video, we're not going to be trying to recreate anything in particular, like a sofa or a chair, but instead we're going to approach this as an issue that you would try to fix by looking at it geometrically. So let's start by making the geometry for our Chesterfield. For this, I'm going to start off with a plane. Now, the size of the plane in, uh, for this uh, thing to work, you want to get a two by one ratio. So basically here, I'm going to start with a 50 by 25. It really doesn't matter. You can use any size you want. Just make sure it's not too small so you get issues when you're working. As long as it's a, a two by one, you're fine. Now, for the length and the width segments, you want to have a 4 by 2. So, with this, I'm going to convert this to an edible poly so I can start working on it. Now, with the vertex selection, make sure you select all of these, I just like all of these vertices like that. So, you select one, then on the side ones, the middle one, the side ones, and the middle one. With this selected, hit connect. This is going to give you this type of a geometry. Now, with this still, uh, with the selection still active, hit on the chamfer view, on the chamfer option here, and make sure that you have a chamfer that's big enough all the way till about so. Make sure that these lines don't overlap. So I'm going to click OK and accept this selection. Now, select all of these outside polygons and delete them. All right, once we have that selected, now I'm going to select my inner inset once, twice, and three times. I'm going to select this middle part now. And as if we uh, take a look at this, it's still a plane. It's still 2D. Now, if we want to have it as a 3D, we just need to give it some width. So pull it downwards like that and delete the bottom part like that so we have an open now this one should get to about there this one should get lower like that and we get something like this all right awesome now let me just quickly check and see how the hole looks all right no sharp edges this is good so now we just need to fill in the gaps the way to do it is select the, the border here, hold on control and click on polygon. That's going to select the bottom uh, polygons. Now grow this a few times and now we're going to detach this as a clone. Name is really not important for now. Move it to the side. And now we want to clone this and fill in all the blanks that we have in our uh, model. So hold on shift with the uh, snap selected so you can see if I have it uh, snapped on vertex press s to uh, turn it on and now simply there we go I want it here move it in place one version over there one option over here one there one there and just two more one for the top and one for the bottom all right i want to attach all of these together we'll no longer need this so we're going to delete it 
And now I'm going to crop out all the unnecessary geometry that I have left over on these guys. So basically select them, delete, select, delete, delete and delete. So what we are left with is this type of a geometry. Now press 1 to select a vertex, control A to select or simply drag up all of the vertices, weld with a very small amount and click OK. Now, if I put a turbo smooth on, you're going to see that I get this sort of a geometry, which is basically where we want to be when we are starting uh, modeling a Chesterfield. Now, since we're making this geometrically correct, what we, want, we might want to consider is the fact that if we take a look at closer to one of the Chesterfields, what you're going to notice is that so far we're going to have a bit of a problem because the Chesterfields tend to have these lines connecting between all of these uh, holes. And now the problem here is that if we decide to add in a line over here, like that, it's going to give us a bit of a pinching issue. So for example, if I go even lower and put a line like this, then we're going to have some pinching issue. So for this, I can either go and try to model on the turbo smooth like this, but this is going to give me much more geometry than I'm going to have to deal with, which I prefer to have a lower uh, count of geometry. So what I do tend to do is, first of all, I'm going to make a copy of this because I want to retain this geometry as well. I want to make that copy and this Again, I'm going to come in and delete all of those edges that we added in, like that. I'm going to do it from the top, it's better, it's easier and faster. There we go. Like that. So, what I want to do is add in more geometry in the middle. The way to do it, the easiest way would be go over here and in the modeling section here we have the quick loop or the swift loop i'm going to click this and then where I, you can see that i can add in uh edge wherever i want it since i want to have a perfect um distance between these i'm going to hold down shift and click this is going to give me a uh, just an extra edge in the middle between the two edges so it's gonna have a, a set flow added to it all right so with this now we're gonna do the same thing we did previously select all of those edges so grow grow I'm gonna collapse this again and detach put it to the side like so and now we're doing the same thing, but you're going to notice that now we have a tiny bit of a problem because basically now we have extra geometry that we're going to have to work around. It's not really hard to do, just takes a tiny bit of time. But you will see it's very easy to do. Like that. Like that. All right. And that. Okay. So what I want to do is select this. And now I want to add in the extra bit of geometry. So the way to do it would be the easiest way to do it is simply with the cut tool. I'm going to uh, cut like that. So you just cut across. It really doesn't matter where it is because later on, as soon as I'm done with the cutting, I go like that. Now from here, from the center, I want to get it out from the actual uh, piece over there. As you can see now, we're, uh, since I'm cutting here, it's basically uh, looking at just this geometry. I haven't attached it to the other ones, so it's easier for me to cut out. So I'm gonna isolate again. There we go, like that. I'm just trying not to miss out on any of them, but you will see in a minute 
that even if I do mess up something, it's really easy to fix, like that. There we go. I think that's all of them except this one. And that should cover all of it. Yep, it does. Okay, so now attach all of these guys back together. Like so. And what we're going to do here is with the target weld, make sure we go and attach all of those together like that. Just follow the contour of the actual holes and you shouldn't have any problem. Just make sure you don't uh, select one of these and weld it like that. That is going to break the shape. Just weld it so it follows that perfect circle. Since we have perfect circles and perfect geometry, we're not going to get any issues with distortion and it's going to be easy, easier for it to tile seamlessly. There you go, like that. Just a few more and like so. Okay, awesome. Again, I'm going to select all of those edges that I really don't need from the top. And what we are left is with geometry looking like this, which means we have more edges that now we can work with. So since I have more geometry, if we take a look at the image again, what you're going to notice is that this basically is, this cut-in has one piece that's kind of sticking outwards a bit and two ridges on the side. So it's stitching. All right, so to do this, simply select all of those edges where you want to have, oh, oh, I almost forgot. Whenever you're attaching uh, dif uh, different types of, or different meshes together, always select all of the ver uh, vertices and weld them together with a small amount. That, that will make sure that everything is uh, welded together and be uh, part of the same model. All right, again, like that. So basically, wherever you want to see that type of a seam, now would be the good time to select it, like so. All right. So now what we want to do here is I want to chamfer this. This chamfer is going to be basically the width of that connection. So we can try it with, let's say, 0 0.2. It's going to work for me. And now select all of those edges in the middle, like so. Make sure you have the ones on the other side as well. That one, oops, just the ones in the middle. Hit ring and hit connect. Now with this connect, we basically have the actual line that's gonna be the stitching. So for this, I'm going to hit extrude with a small amount, just till I get it to about there. And the width can be directly controlled here. If I leave it on like this, we're going to have uh, two lines, which is going to give it an extra bit of sharpness over there. So for this, I'm going to click OK. And now we can, if we want, hold on Control and click on Polygon and simply sli very slightly move this downwards, just a very tiny bit like that. That's gonna give us an extra bit of detail once we put on the turbo smooth. It's gonna look something like this. So as you can see, we have very nice detail following the contour of that line, like so. Okay. All right, so the other thing that I want to probably want to do here is go ahead and try and add in just a bit more detail into uh, these holes. And when I say more details, 
let me show you another image there we go this one kind of uh, captures it really well all the tension around that hole it's going to give you this uh, type of a look it has that uh, f tension on the leather is giving these uh, little ridges over here now you can easily do this if you're going to be sculpting on the uh, model in ZBrush but if you want to keep it just in uh, uh, 3ds Max native then the way to do this or add in these type of passive uh, geometry or passive details but it's really not that hard what you want to do here is select all of those uh, all of these ver uh, vertices so select one skip one edge select one again make sure you don't select the bottom ones because we don't need those but make sure you select the rest like that there we go so basically you select one uh, line you skip one you select one skip one and since we're working on a perfect uh, 8 and now a perfect 16 sided uh, hole we don't have any kind of a issue with geometry so there we go like that select those I know it's a bit tedious and repetitive but in the end it will give you much needed detail with just a few vertices moved and it kind of pays off on the long run there we go like that it's going to be a bit repetitive so if you want to have a more uh, interesting look mix it up a bit select different ones and move them around so with all of those uh, vertices selected slightly move them inwards like that so now what this is going to do is once we put on the turbo smooth on top of it I give it two iteration you're going to notice that i have this friction on here it's very visible like so there we go and now again if i go ahead and basically make a few copies of this let's see three Put them all together attach them make sure the weld works now with a very very slight small um, value here make sure these guys don't weld together like so turn on the turbo smooth and you get very very clean look for your geometry there we go like this so for this this is basically how you would make the center portion for your chesterfield so for this i turn on the turbo smooth and here we are at the base so with my centerpiece done i'm going to hold down shift and copy it over here so i have an actual uh, version here that's going to be unchanged so now i'm going to work continue work on this one so basically now what i want to do here is i want to make a piece that is going to be the ending what i mean by ending is that so far we have a piece of geometry that can coincide for this piece but now we need something that's going to be for the actual endings or somewhere to terminate uh, some way to terminate this type of an edge so to do this it's really easy again because well basically what we started off was with clean geometry and we can continue by just simply going over here like that select that piece from the top Make sure everything is selected and now detach this as a clone there we go i'm gonna move this over here i'm gonna mirror it on the y-axis like so i can just rotate it really doesn't matter and now what i want to do is i'm gonna stick it over here till it gets till about there all right so now what we want to do here 
is first of all I need to make sure that it, I basically ter uh, terminate these holes so all of this geometry is now no longer needed so I'm going to select everything hit delete because I really don't need it anymore like so and now if I take a look at my image you can see it's no longer going to have those ridges but instead it's going to have just one going in the middle so that means that I can simply double click on all of those edges like that like so don't touch the middle one so just the inner pieces those two hold on control and backspace that is going to remove those edges like so and now what I want to do here is I'm going to hold down shift and drag this out till like so hold on shift drag this thing out over here and now make sure all the vertices are in line with that one like so and I want to make sure that this line over here that we have is flat on the Z or planar on the Z like so all right so now select those two bridge them together and select those two bridge those two together now what we're gonna see a problem being that this thing doesn't uh, connect so with a simple cut we can go from there to there if we want to terminate on the edge like so and oops see a problem Control Z to level out there. And now with a target weld, make sure it goes like that. As so. So if I put a turbo smooth on at the moment, there we go. We still have that nice detail with, that we put in. And it's coming to terminate on a simple line that I can extend one more uh, time over here. And I'm going to actually leave it on like this. And the reason for this is that uh, we really don't know what type of uh, model that we're going to be making. We might have to make it on a corner. We might have to or might want to have it as a straight like this. It's really going to be easier for you to work if you actually end with just a simple uh, line. There we go like this. Make sure those two are like that and we have a termination point also since we want to have uh, one in the middle but actually I want to have one without the seam going to the end so I'm gonna go and make a copy over here that copy is gonna stay like that and this thing I'm gonna work on is I'm gonna give it the same thing we did the chamfer with a 0 0.2 selection in the middle with a connect and an extrude as you can see it's still uh it still has that uh, all of those information saved from where we previously used it so so it's basically gonna have the same exact look like the rest of the geometry we have over here so with this what we basically have if we attach both of these together it's going to have one continuous piece of geometry let me just do it so you can see it better so attach make sure all of these are well together nicely so so now if i put a turbo smooth the geometry ends really nice on the top here and if we want to do the same thing, there we go. We can basically copy this on the side. So turn on the turbo smooth, put it here. I'm just gonna center this thing like that, 90 degrees. There we go. Once. make it over here twice and what you're going to notice is that these uh, pieces are actually going to really come next to each other and they're going to be continuous without any issues so if i attach both of these together 
I might actually want to make sure that these uh, two guys are straight, but I think that the weld is going to fix that issue. There we go. Just want to make sure that I don't screw up the center, which we will. So instead, I'm going to select just the middle line over here, weld it together like so. And now if I attach both of these together and then do a weld on all of them with a very, very small amount. And let's just simply go and do the top one as well. Attach this thing together. So we can see how the whole thing will look like. So turbo smooth on all of this. And we basically get the middle part and the edge part. The only thing that's going to be left to do is simply make one plane and connect all the geometry for it to uh, terminate on an actual uh, corner. All right. So with this, we basically made the, the base kit for creating any type of a Chesterfield geometry. Now, this is really uh, good when you have something like this but if you take a look at the actual door these are not perfect uh perfect uh cubes or uh perfect rectangles but in instead these are more like a uh, diamond shape so in order to make uh diamond shaped chesterfields what you're gonna do is when you're actually at the mm, base here like this all you can do is simply just go ahead and skew this inwards till about uh, till you get the look that you're going for. In this case, if I skew it at 60%, I'm going to get that look. And now if I go ahead and uh, multiply this thing uh, outwards, you're going to see that I'm basically getting that same look. I didn't really have to do all that much. And if I put a turbo smooth on top of it, you get that look. All right, I'm going to back up. But this was the point in getting uh, you to understand how to make the basic geometry for modeling any type of a Chesterfield. And if you're basically modeling something more complex like this, then what you can do is either put a bend modifier on something like this, or if it's uh, more complex, maybe just even something like this, instead of manually going and uh, bending this uh, by hand, what you can do is use the slide knit uh, script. I actually do have a video on working with a slide knit. I will put it in the description of, the, uh, of this video. So if you don't know how the slide knit works, check out that video. But for this one, I guess that would more or less cover how to make the base for a Chesterfield. So I hope you guys had fun and managed to learn something new. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will meet you in the comment section of the video. If you enjoyed the video, then please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.